Uh, Jeff mentioned that I'm a neurosurgeon, and the question is, what in the world is a neurosurgeon doing talking about this particular subject? And uh, so many things in my own life have happened in a serendipitous fashion, and I'm sure you know the word serendipity. Uh, serendipity derives from a term by an English author, Walpole, who in the 1800s was writing to a colleague to describe something that happens totally unexpected, but very beneficial, very good, very happy, uh, very pleasant. And I had a very serendipitous uh, occurrence approximately four years ago in Boston, Massachusetts, when I was attending an international meeting of neurosurgery, and Jeff and I actually were presenting data there on some concussion things that we've done in the NFL. And uh, a young 37-year-old uh, windsurfer from Australia uh, who looked about 27 years old uh, gave a talk on xenohormesis and how to increase longevity. And this was one of those talks that I'd go to and I'd think, well, if it's not too good, at least I can sleep. It's a big room. It's quiet and it's dark. And uh, as David started to speak, I became much more interested. And uh, he's really talking about a whole new paradigm shift in aging, of, of activating genes, of compounds that can make us live longer, of reducing the incidence of cardiovascular disease, neurodegenerative disease, and uh, cancer. And uh, it really got my attention. So much so that uh, I ran out of the lecture hall afterwards, grabbed him in the hall, and said, look, I, I really want to know more about what you're doing. He invited me to Boston. And the next week, I took a US Air flight uh, to Boston, visited his lab. And uh, we developed a, a relationship and a friendship and uh, kind of changed my, whole, my own whole life and perspective in, in many areas. And what I'm going to do today is share with you that story. And hopefully uh, there, may, there may be a few, uh, a few nuggets of information that you can take away with you that may have some utility uh, in your own practice. <clears throat> uh, so, in 2006, these are a few of the headlines that were flashed around the world when one of the first papers on the use of resveratrol uh, was shown to be beneficial. Researchers seek key to anti-aging and calorie cutback. Uh, Chicago Sun-Times, cozy up to a glass of red wine and live longer. Uh, a longer life with red wine. Big doses of red wine extract help obese mice stay fat and happy. Red wine ingredients increases endurance, a study showed. And it also may cut the risk of colorectal cancer. Uh, so these headlines, including those in Pravda and virtually every newspaper in the world, uh, were flashed. And the conclusion was that based on world-class science done at Harvard and confirmed by many other researchers, uh, there was something to these small molecules that regulate lifespan. And there was some evidence for this concept of xenohormesis, whatever that is. And I will explain that to you. But then, similarly, uh, in March of 2006, front page of Business Week, Forever Young, the anti-aging industry, promises to turn, time, turn uh, back time. But high prices, big claims, uncertain science. And uh, concurrent with this, uh, in 2007, April 2007, was a, an article in the New York Times strongly castigating and condemning the A4M. Have any of you seen that article? Remember that article? I mean, basically, uh, the essence of the reporter's information was that the only thing that happens at a meeting like this 
is the selling of growth hormone for illicit reasons. Uh, how many in here have taken the boards for the uh, anti-age A4M? Anybody here? Okay. How many here is this your first meeting to A4M? First one. I'd be interested in your opinion uh, in, in terms of the quality of the, the science. Clearly, it's, a, it's an open forum for an incredible number of diverse products. No question about that. Uh, but I do believe that there is some science, but Business Week says, wait a minute, forever young, uh, there's precious little scientific data to say that we can do anything about prolonging aging. Uh, let's look at the science of aging. And these are some of the key uh, years and medical advances that I was able to glean from the medical literature. Beginning in 1935, uh, with Clive McKay, who is a nutritionist at the University of Cornell uh, Medical Center. And how many are familiar with his initial work, his initial paper? Anybody? Clive McKay was really the first to show that calorie restriction in animals could prolong life by up to 40%, but even more significantly, when animals were calorie restricted, they had a markedly reduced incidence of cancer, vascular disease, and neurodegenerative diseases of the brain. Uh, this observation was subsequently repeated over the years, but it never was known why that occurred. Dr. Harmon uh, at the University of Nebraska, who introduced the free radical theory, uh, suggested that uh, there were less, there was less oxidation, uh, less ages, less uh, contaminants in the calorie restricted animal, and they lived longer for that reason. Uh, Walford, a British scientist, proposed that calorie restriction triggered an evolutionary ancient starvation response to slow aging. Anybody in here calorie restrict at this point as a means of health? Hard to do. I've tried it. 40% uh, cut back in calories is, it, it takes a, a lot of willpower. Uh, and then in 1992, Cynthia Kenyon at the University of California in San Francisco found that if she induced a particular gene mutation in the DAF1 gene, that the span of worms could be extended by 50 to 75 percent. It was the first time that a genetic approach to, the, to uh, aging was really postula, postulated. In 1996 at Southern Illinois, uh, scientists again uh, used gene mutations to increase the lifespan of mice. And then in 2000, in, in 2000, Lenny Garenti at MIT, a molecular biologist, reported that in calorie-restricted yeast, a particular gene was activated, the so-called SIR gene, S-I-R, uh, and this gene may have been responsible for the increased longevity. David Sinclair who was a postdoc fellow in Garenti's lab and traveled from Australia with a one-way ticket to work in his lab with no way back to Australia. Uh, subsequently worked, got his doctorate at MIT and then became head of the anti-aging laboratory at Harvard University and reported uh, in 2003 that resveratrol, the Active antioxidant in red wine extends the yeast lifespan uh, very significantly. In other words, he was able to use another molecule instead of calorie restriction to activate the gene to increase lifespan. Italian scientists in 06 uh, saw that the same thing could happen, including an enhancement in cognition in goldfish, or in gold, no, it wasn't goldfish, but it was fish. 